<clears throat> good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to ISAP th um, thematic track session 12. It is my pleasure to uh, welcome you to this session that is entitled Introducing the forthcoming UNEP report, strengthening the environmental dimension of the voluntary national reviews in Asia and the Pacific. Lessons learned and ways forward. So in this session, we're going to share some key findings from a research work that we at IGES have been collaborating with UNEP on over the last year and a half or so. And uh, you're very welcome to, as was shared during the, um, during the introductory uh, video here, that you're very welcome to share comments or questions at any time you have. In fact, I believe the, the report um, should uh, be launched formally today, but uh, as, as it happens sometimes, uh, we have run into uh, some very small challenges. So that means that instead of uh, actually formally launching the report today, um, it will be launched in the very near future, in the, over the next few days. And so what we will do is to um, make available uh, the formally launched report on the page of um, this session, on the web page of this session, as soon as, it's, as, as it is launched, so that you can access the, the, re the report in its entirety. And having said so, um, let me make a few introductory points. Because as you know, global reviews are showing that we are not making enough progress on the sustainable development goals. In fact, at current speeds, the Asia Pacific region is likely to achieve the sustainable development goals in 2065 or even later. There are many challenges, socioeconomic and environmental challenges. But we have to remember that the SDGs, they remain our blueprint for a sustainable recovery from COVID-19. Um, I want to share a few findings um, that my um, fellow participants will provide more detail on in a little while. Firstly, um, it is the, the review uh, that we have produced, it looked at um, 50 voluntary national reviews that were produced in the region between 2016 and 2021. And here we found, for example, that frequency and coherence of the VNRs are important. Some countries um, in this region have produced several VNRs since the SDGs were introduced in 2015. Increasing frequency of VNR production for countries between now and 2030, which is the end date of the SDGs, is recommended for all countries. Um, furthermore, VNRs should be coherent over time and they should be linked thematically. For example, with regards to the environment, in 2017, Japan discussed environmental progress, as well as offered several examples of domestic challenges and actions to address related issues in their first VNR. And then in, in their second VNR in 2021, Japan underlined the environmental conservation as one of eight identified priorities. On data, we will hear more very soon from a colleague of mine, but um, we found that uh, VNRs should have standardized annexes that present statistical indicators. And where, where um, data is lacking to match with international indicators, um, maybe countries should try to use national proxy indicators. And in fact, uh, some countries uh, are doing so as well. Um, overall, with regards to the environment, we found that more focus on environment and more focus on the global commons in the VNRs is needed. Um, while our research shows that over time, environmental content in the VNRs is increasing, it means there is more environmental content in VNRs that are produced in 2021 and 2022 compared to 2016, still the proportion of environmental issues that are discussed in the VNRs is um, much smaller than, than uh, social and environmental issues. So for example, the UN could facilitate some mechanism whereby countries share 
uh, information on environmental challenges and how they tackle them. Another point I would like to make is that stakeholder engagement needs strengthening in the VNRs. And some countries have good practices there. Um, one very practical uh, suggestion is to include a list of which stakeholders have been engaged in production of the VNRs, and also to make sure that um, the stakeholders that are engaged don't just come from the capital cities or the big cities, but that the government makes an effort to reach out to rural areas as well, because the situation and the development challenges in rural areas can be different than in the cities. The last point I would like to make is um, about governance. In fact, uh, it's about meta-governance. And our review finds that VNRs, like, like the SDGs, tend to rely very much on voluntary arrangements for encouraging implementation and for encouraging action. And we, we did a text analysis that suggests that the re region favors market-oriented governance styles for the SDGs ahead of regulatory, and information-based approaches. Of course, we need to recognize the, the important role that the private sector is playing and can play in SDG implementation. But we also think that market-oriented and voluntary approaches on their own may not be sufficient to improve performance on the SDGs. This is especially the case for environment-related SDGs, which we know are lacking behind. Here, in this case, maybe regulatory approaches uh, might be needed because market logic may not always work when it comes to protecting the environment. But we will hear more from one of our, um, one of our participants on the issue of meta-governance in a little while. So with these uh, very few um, preliminary um, or very cursory um, findings that I have shared here, I would like to um, pass the floor to um, our next speaker, that is uh, Jinhua Sang, who is a regional coordinator uh, for science policy, um, Asia Pacific Office, United Nations Environment Program. Jinhua, the mic is yours. Thank you, Seema. And as uh, Seema mentioned, this presentation is based on the Asia Pacific Regional Review of Environment Dimension of Voluntary National Reviews on the SDG, a collaborative project between UNEP and the IGES. I would like to thank IGES for the outstanding partnership with UNEP to promote sustainable development and the environment sustainability in the region and the globally. And the thank Simon and the IGES team for the great work on this unique project. Next slide, please. As we all know, 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda is the ambitious plan of action for people, planet, prosperity by all member countries and the stakeholders. The crisis over the past three years caused by COVID-19 pandemic has assured us that the importance of a healthy planet is central to the 2030 Agenda. This Asia Pacific Regional Review on Environmental Dimension of Voluntary National Reviews, produced by 36 countries in the region, which was submitted to the UN High Level Political Forum in 2016 to 2021 with our objective to harness the knowledge and the experience accumulated by countries in the process of producing their VNRs, the regional review captures the following findings and the key messages. The next slide, please. As Simon also highlighted, the SDG performance in the region is improving 
been but too slowly. Asia Pacific may take till 2065 to achieve all the SDG goals. Next slide, please. From 2016 to 2021, 50 vineyards had been produced by member countries. Countries tend to produce the longer subsequent vineyards compared to the first one. The second one and the third one tend to engage deep with all the SDGs. Vineyards have been proven to be an important exercise for countries to pack with the complex and the interlinked SDGs. Next one, please. On the environmental dimension of the wingers, two thirds of the revealed wingers had indicated environment, dedicated environmental chapters or sections discussing the environmental situation and the progress and the challenges. And it is recommended future wingers to have more environment content than earlier ones. Next two, please. This slide shows all the 50 winners with the environmental content. It shows that very few limited uh, winners have content, have environmental content more than 1%. Data indicates the need to enhance environmental issues in the future we ask. The next slide, please. Governance and the, and the stakeholder engagement. Data and the indicators are also the important topics in being a development. I would not discuss in detail of the findings on the, these two topics. As Professor Muleman and Dr. Joe will present their respective solid work and the in-depth analytics on these topics. The next, please. Finally, the way forward. The regional review report presents an important and comprehensive work on of the SDGs implementation and the progress reporting across Asia Pacific region. It reaffirms the need for urgent action, including by building public awareness and ensuring stakeholder participation to address the triple planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss, and the pollution, while also calling for accelerated efforts on all the SDGs. Thank you. Simon, back to you. Thank you very much, Jinhua, for your very clear um, capturing the several important key points of the report. And doing so within the limited allotment of time that we have today. So thank you very much for that. And as you also said uh, in your slides, we have um, another participant that will share more detail on the data and indicators situation. And here I would like to welcome my colleague, Xin Zhou, who is a research leader for the Integrated Sustainability Center here with us at IGES. And she will provide some findings on data and indicators as found in this VNR review. And she may provide some perspective on SDGs and the environment. Over to you, Zhou. So, uh, thank you very much, Simon. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning. Uh, following the 
previous uh, speaker, Jinhua, I would like to uh, talk about the indicators and data gaps uh, in measuring uh, environment-related SDGs uh, based on the results from the UNEP's original review of VNRs in Asia-Pacific and some possible uh, solutions uh, to close the gap. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals cover 17 goals, 169 targets, and 231 indicators. Among this, UNEP identified that 15 goals, 71 targets, and 92 indicators are related to the environment. The interagency and expert group on SDG indicators defined three tiers to inform on indicators and the data availability. Tier one indicates those um, have established methodology and the data is available for at least 50% of countries. And tier two indicators have established methodology, but data is not sufficient. And tier three indicators do not have established methodology. For the initial status of SDG indicators in 2015, tier one indicators accounted for 39% um, and the tiers two and three accounted for 90% and 27% respectively. Recently, these have been greatly improved with tier one indicators increased to 58% and there are no more uh, three, um, tier three indicators. However, data availability varies across countries. Here are 92 SDG indicators corresponding to 71 SDG targets that were identified by UNEP as related to the environment. Most of these targets are covered by goals 6, 7, as well as goals 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. For the initial stage of the environment-related SDG indicators in 2015, tier one indicators accounted for 23% and tiers two and three accounted for 28% and 34% respectively. Recent progress indicated that tier one indicators increased to 53%. The SDG progress in Asia Pacific was ass assessed in the 2022 uh, UNSCAP report, as already um, uh, indicated by Simon. We can see that uh, the progress towards the SDGs in five sub regions has slowed, and the region is not on track to achieve any of the 17 goals. For the environment, all five sub-regions have regressed on responsible consumption and production, Goal 12, and Climate Action, Goal 13, and progress in Goals 11 and 14 throughout the region has been very slow or stagnant. On the other hand, data availability is a big challenge for monitoring environmental uh, progress in Asia Pacific, particularly for goals 11, 12, 13, and 14. In 2022, UNEP conducted a regional review of the VNRs in Asia Pacific, covering 36 countries and 50 VNRs from mainly an environmental perspective. For the indicators, we developed a framework to review environment-related indicators and their goals, targets, how global SDG indicators use data availability to track progress and the key challenges. We found that the overall coverage of the environment-related indicators in 50 VNRs was low, only 29% ranging from 41% for goal seven to 8% for goal eight. In many cases, even though the indicators were reported, data availability and the level of progress were often not reported, making it difficult to track the progress. This figure shows the coverage of the environment-related indicators in individual VNRs. We can see that it ranges from 100% in Bangladesh VNR 2020 and nearly zero in Samoa 
VNR 2016. Also, we can see that a countries having more than one VNR show an increasing trend of reporting the environment related indicators. For example, 63% of the environment related indicators were reported in Indonesia 2021 VNR compared to 40% reported in the 2019 VNR and only 60% reported in the 2017 um, VNR. For the use of the global SDG indicators, about 71% of the environment-related indicators reported in VNRs use the global SDG indicators, which ranges from 90% for Go 8 to 40% for Go 5. In addition, there's an increasing trend of using global SDG indicators in countries with more VNRs. For example, Japan's VNR 2021. Um, there were 92% um, of the environment-related indicators reported by using uh, global SDG indicators compared to 67% in their 2017 VNR. We also found that many countries such as Bangladesh, Indonesia, and Cambodia use the national SDG indicators and data to monitor environment-related SDG progress based on the national context and data availability. Here are some key findings on the environment-related indicators used in the VNRs. The overall coverage of the environment-related indicators in VNRs is low, and there are big differences across countries. The global SDG indicators were often used for reporting the environment-related indicators with an increasing trend, but national indicators were also used based on the national context and data availability. The reporting format, indicators, use of global indicators, trackable data, and progress assessment, etc., differ largely across countries and across multiple BNRs for the same country, which make it difficult to track progress and make comparison across countries difficult. For the recommendations, we suggest that to strengthen the reporting of the environment-related indicators in VNRs in general, with a focus on those that goals 3, 8, 9, 11, 12, and 15. We suggest the UNDESA and uh, UNEP to collaborate to uh, provide guidelines on how to report environment-related indicators in the VNRs, including the format, VNR monitoring process, indicators, and data use, and progress assessment. And also provide capacity building in least developed countries and developing countries including the development of a um, couple of uh, country uh, case studies to strengthen the reporting uh, capacity. To close the indicator and data gaps, uh, possible solutions, that inclu including the use of uh, proxy indicators and national indicators are recommended. Closing the indicators and the data gaps is the urgent for achieving the environment dimension of uh, the SDGs and depends on various measures, such as using proxy indicators, applying innovative technologies based on ICT and big data, and building the partnerships among multi-stakeholders at the global, national, and sub-national scales. Here listed a couple of indicators and data sources that can be used as proxy indicators. For example, the UNEP, the WOS, um, the Environment Situation Room provides uh, rich data on the environment-related uh, indicators. At IGIS, uh, we developed a methodology and a free online tool to identify, quantify, and visualize um, the interlinkages between the SDG targets and applied it to 27 countries in Asia and Africa. To quantify the interlinkages, we developed a database on the SDG indicators and data, including using proxy indicators. Thank you very much for your kind attention.
Thank you, Simon. Back to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tso, for, uh, for um, presenting very clear and succinctly to us, um, but with information-packed slides. Um, I, I'm sure that uh, all our participants were very uh, interested in the, the, your findings and your messages. And in fact, um, well, one thing I was thinking of while listening to uh, your presentation was that since there is such a big difference between the, the percentage coverage of um, the data in different countries, maybe there may be some countries that are really good at collecting data on a certain SDG, and there are other countries that are not very good at it. So there, there may be an opportunity there for some peer learning or peer exchange. But the, in fact, um, we have received, um, well, we have received three questions. And initially I thought we we're going to wait until the end to try to address questions, but why don't we just take a couple of them now uh, while everyone has a very fresh uh, memory of all the information that uh, Zoe has just shared with us. And we have three questions here. I'm not sure we can take all of them now, but uh, let's try to see. Um, if you don't mind, so, um, for example, um, if you don't mind to try to, to answer some of them, uh, for example, the one um, somebody asked, an anonymous attendee uh, asked whether you have analyzed why, for example, target eight is among the, the ones that is least represented and, and then uh, compared to that, um, uh, sorry, uh, SDG eight is very underreported in terms of environmental data. And in comparison, um, I think it's uh, SDG seven is uh, much higher on the list. Do you have a, a possible explanation for why that may be the case. Thank you very much uh, for the um, uh, question uh, from the uh, Q and A um, uh, kind of box. Uh, I think this is a very um, um, relevant uh, question and actually uh, for um, the environment related indicators under uh, goal eight that is related to uh, uh, target 8.4 on um, the uh, sustainable uh, management of um, uh, resources or decoupling of uh, uh, economic growth from uh, resource use and uh, um, the indicators used, um, uh, if I uh, remember well, is uh, related uh, uh, to the uh, material uh, um, uh, material used in uh, uh, the country, or like um, material flows used in the uh, country. It is not based on the uh, consumption-based uh, uh, material use. Um, but I think um, uh, actually yeah, UNEP provides uh, a kind of um, uh, rich data related to these uh, indicator and other related uh, indicators um, uh, in their um, uh, database and as well as in the uh, UNSD uh, database. Um, but uh, the thing is um, um, not many country use that uh, indicator or report this specific indicator um, to um, uh, measure on the um, uh, sustainable resource use because they use um, they often use this indicator for measuring the um, uh, resource sustainable resource use under uh, goal um, uh, twelve, which is on uh, uh, responsible consumption and uh, production. So. Um, usually, yeah, when they report uh, indicators uh, under uh, for uh, goal eight, they mainly focus on the economic uh, performance, uh, like uh, GDP growth um, for um, eight point one and uh, employment rate for uh, target uh, eight point five, etc. So actually, having the yeah, um, like uh, decoupling uh, resource use from economic growth under uh, goal um, eight uh, uh, is not that often used by um, uh, countries uh, in their uh, VNR. So that is the uh, main reason I observed uh, uh, when we uh, review the uh, uh, indicators. Hope, hopefully uh, I addressed uh, your uh, question. Back to you, Simon. Thank you very much. Um, we have another two questions. Um, um, do you, 
are you are you okay if if we take one more question and then perhaps we we save the last one till the end? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think. I mean, this is a, a this is a I think this is a difficult question. So please just provide. But since you 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 answered the previous one so well, uh, I feel confident to ask this one to you. It's basically the first question, right? It's it's a question regarding how indicators um, uh, for VNRs are are developed. I'm not sure, um, but um, and how how if there is a difference between you know uh, national and regional uh, regional. I don't think that maybe our participant means a regional VNR, but maybe a regional sort of aggregation or aggregate of of what's happening and whether there's there are differences between countries. Maybe you can just, you know, share some insights based on your, the, the, the research you have done, yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the um, um, very um, um, valuable question here. Um, actually, I think, um, um, yeah, countries actually use different uh, kinds of ways uh, to uh, um, to use the indicators uh, to monitor the uh, measure the uh, SDG progress um, um, at the national level. Um, so um, some countries uh, actually yeah, develop the yeah, uh, data uh, monitoring uh, plan uh, with um, um, involvement of uh, multiple uh, stakeholders. Uh, including um, the statistical um, uh, bureau, um, the uh, various uh, sector, uh, sectoral uh, ministries, uh, as well as industries uh, and other stakeholders. Um, so um, in other cases, um, a country uh, use uh, the uh, global SDG uh, uh, indicators um, uh, and also some of them actually uh, developed uh, their national uh, SDG uh, indicators uh, to help track the progress. Um, and also for the assessment of the performance, um, some countries uh, set the uh, baseline uh, for measuring the progress and also the targets for uh, 2030, because for, for many of the um, SDG indicators, uh, uh, we do not have uh, specific targets, uh, or some of the spe specific targets is quite uh, qualitative than um, um, quantitative. Um, so uh, yeah, there's um, various uh, practices um, um, used by yeah, countries uh, uh, for um, um, reporting the um, uh, SDG indicators in general, and for uh, environment-related uh, uh, SDG indicators um, uh, uh, specifically. Um, so um, I, I think um, um, because uh, this is um, uh, based on each country's um, um, kind of uh, uh, capacity and uh, the existing um, uh, resources for uh, data collection uh, and reporting. Um, so I think, um, um, yeah, um, this vary from country to country. And I, I, I think um, particularly for um, um, the VNRs in general, uh, UNDESA uh, provides a kind of guideline on how to uh, report uh, the VNRs, uh, including um, those on the indicators uh, and the data. Um, but I think uh, for uh, environment-related SDG indicators, as I uh, suggested, uh, maybe uh, UNEP and the UN DESA can work together to provide some details, uh, guidelines, and uh, country cases uh, to guide how to report the uh, uh, environment-related uh, indicators and progress. And uh, maybe uh, it is not the case that uh, all of the uh, processes can be followed by country, but maybe a kind of protocol on reporting how to report. And if data uh, is not available, how to uh, use alternatives, et cetera, uh, need to be uh, provided. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for this uh, very uh, detailed and elaborate answer. So, and it, it reminds me from a, a meeting that I just came back from where, for, where in the case of um, where uh, there may be challenges or there's not enough official data, there, there are calls for using alternative data kinds and alternative data sources, including ci citizen generated data 
And that could be anything from, from smartphone generated data or observations or qualitative types of data. And here, as you point out, an important, part, an important issue is the compatibility between uh, the more official type of data and then the citizen generated data. I think uh, some guidelines or some, some thinking might be helpful in, in how to combine those kinds of things. I just wanted to uh, quickly share that as well. Um, so, so thank you very much, Zoe, for, for, for all the information you have shared with us now. Um, I would like to um, move the session forward and uh, welcome our uh, last speaker for today. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Louis Moilemann, who is the Director of Public Strategy for Sustainable Development. But uh, 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 Dr. Moilemann has a, uh, a, um, a much bigger profile than that. And, and uh, among others, he is a, an author of uh, multiple books uh, on meta governance. And so he will talk to us today about meta governance and, and tell us a bit about what it is and how it's related to, to the sustainable development question and the SDGs. And uh, before I say more, I think uh, we should rather listen to uh, Louis. So over to you, the mic is yours. Thank you very much, Simon. It's very good to see you. And um, uh, yeah, maybe I should start by saying that uh, I, I am a little bit an, an, an academic, but mostly I, I'm a former policymaker in environmental policies. And, uh, and the reason that I needed to start thinking about meta governance is that I had all kinds of problems in practice, which I didn't understand. And so it's great, in, great for hearing about your, your uh, report about the VNRs. Um, VNRs are a super great tool, very important. Um, and um, one thing I, I didn't hear yet, uh, uh, this is probably in the report, but in my view, um, that uh, making a VNR is not only making this report, but it is also a process. And in countries in Europe that are at the moment making a, a new VNR, like Portugal and Romania, I know that they, they see this as an, an important opportunity to, to revitalize SDG implementation and to create new coordination structures that should also stay after the VNR process. I was also very happy to hear about uh, environmental indicators. I, I've been involved in environmental indicators uh, selection in, in DG environment of the European Commission in the last couple of years. And um, it was very good to hear uh, that, um, that the speaker also says that proxy indicators are important. I think in environmental policy, there's still sometimes the idea that the more environmental uh, indicators we have, the better, but look at climates where the proxy of CO2 is very successful. So, okay, I, what I'm gonna do is, um, I will argue that uh, following uh, what Simon in his introduction has said, that uh, it is uh, for complex issues, very important to now and then take a step back and not just implement governance uh, structures, but to, to look from a bigger distance and, and, um, and, and think about governance of governance. Because, and also Simon reflected on this, um, like everything in life, also governance styles uh, are subject to fashions. And, and that is not always the, the wisest thing to follow. I will just in, in like 10 minutes, very quickly go through um, the topics in the chapters, in fact, in, in this uh, book on meta governance for sustainability. I can do this in 30 minutes and in three hours, but 10 minutes is a challenge, so it will be very short. Uh, next slide, uh, please. Yeah, it's slowly coming, I see, in, in my case. Uh, Anyway, uh, two slides very shortly about the context. Context matters a lot. And uh, we live in what people uh, call the, the VUCA world, uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and, uh, and ambiguity. And that leads to a certain type of responses. Next slide, please. And we're very lucky that we have the 17 SDGs as a kind of a policy of all policies, huh? a meta policy guiding all policies towards 2030. There is not one ministry in government that is not involved, that should not be, be outside of the SDGs. Um, and, and one of the important things is that the quality of public administration and governance is a really key enabler for implementing the SDGs. 
we need not only governments, but government's uh, performance is, is very important. And within that, we need a good balance between policy and governance. Um, next slide, please. Because that's, uh, these are two very different things that are like two sides of a coin or the yin and yang, you could say, of, uh, of effective governance. Um, and um, yeah, like policy is, gives the direction to get things done, and, and, um, but governance uh, shows how it is done. And, and to, to, to deal with this complexity, we need a, a very broad definition of, of governance. For me, uh, governance is how public administration organizations and other stakeholders in whatever relation to each other develop solutions um, and, and create opportunities for societal changes. The so policy is what, governance is how. Next slide, please. And then there are three different basic governance styles and they're hybrids because they're always mixed and they appear in combinations, but it's good to, to select it. And, um, it also makes clear that, um, that there are different ways of solving problems. It's not only by regulation in hierarchical governance, but it's also not only by networks, by informal uh, agreements, and it's also not only by money or market uh, instruments. And like Maslow already said, if you only have a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, but not every problem is a nail. Not every problem can be solved by one of the three, and you need sometimes combinations. The next slide, please. And here you can see that each of these three styles are very cozy houses or mental, mental houses, you could say, silos, because they're very logical in themselves. And all these uh, words belong together. Hierarchy is not rational and reliable. Uh, network governance is about collaboration. And market governance is about flexibility. Competition as driver is an important uh, driver. The point is, next slide, please that each of these styles has strengths, but also typical weaknesses. We know, next slide, please. I don't see it yet. Yes. <clears throat> so each of this, these styles has typical uh, failures and, and, and weaknesses, um, abuse of power and, and a lot of uh, bureaucracy in, when it's only about hierarchy. In, in the country where I'm coming from, the Netherlands, and also in the other Scandinavian countries, the network style is very popular, but it can lead to never ending talks and to manipulation. And the third uh, approach, the market uh, approach can lead to any failure that in real markets uh, appear. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and this is why we need uh, meta governance, uh, designing and managing situational combinations, contextual combinations of hierarchical network and market governance styles as an analytical model, but also as a design model for new policies. I will, in the next slide, give you one example from environmental policy making. It was a meta-governance uh, intervention in which I was myself involved in the Euro when I worked at the European Commission. There was the problem that the weak implementation of European environmental policy and legislation in many member states was, uh, uh, was leading to quite big costs, 55 billion per year estimation. <clears throat> and for that, to tackle that, we had the stick and a carrot, the stick of legal procedures against member states. There was one country that pays, I don't know, millions per day for years, just because they can't get their, uh, their uh, waste management uh, in order. And we have the carrot of uh, uh, EU funding, for environmental infrastructure, that was not enough. So we added a third uh, leg, uh, which is the net network approach, the, the, the dialogue and peer-to-peer -peer approach uh, of the environmental implementation review. Next slide, please. These three styles have, in principle, at least 30, 50 differences. And, and together, this, this creates a very nice and broad toolbox. But you have to think about uh, out of your comfort zone, if you're a believer in one of the three styles. Next slide, please. Here are these 50 differences. And for each of these topics, 50 features of governance, 50 shades of governance, um, there are three different ways to, to do that. Three operational forms, you could say. I would just read, give, we'll give one example because it's very topical now. Next slide, please. 
it is the uh, it's not yes it is the the, the point that uh, each of these styles are very suitable for a certain type of problems hierarchical governance is good for structure but also very good for crisis management and disaster management the network style is very good for complex and unstructured problems with a lot of different interests and the market style is is super good for creating competition to do routine issues as efficient as possible but the point here is that um we live in a tight time of what is called poly crisis. There is a cascade of different crises. So UNEP uh, form formulates as the triple environment crisis, climate change, biodiversity, and pollution. And that's true, and it's very important, and it creates because it, formulating something as a crisis creates lots of money, lots of political attention, and and all kind of good things. But my problem is with that that. <clears throat> For example, climate change is not only a crisis. It's not only a crisis. It's also a very complex problem, a wicked problem even. So you need different approaches also. And some parts are <clears throat> sorry, more um, like routine issues. <clears throat> so that, that means that you cannot just focus on regulation for dealing with these complex issues. It is important um, and it's maybe against fashion, like uh, Simon said, but it is uh, important to also have the other styles on board. Next slide, please. <coughs> Sorry. Ah, the next slide, the other way around. We should go forward. Ice. Yeah, and now the next one. And we're almost there. Oh, then please try again further on because I see the form, slide 12 again. This is 13 and now slide 14. Next one, please. Uh, there is a problem, the, then we are stuck. Then I have to, if if this now stuck is stuck, then uh, we just Maybe, have to, I have excuse to Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, yeah. uh, uh, Luis. And and uh, please, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine to take a minute or, or take a few minutes more. But maybe just uh, if there's a problem, move out of the presentation view and let's just see this yes. uh, slide view and yes. move it that way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let's move out of the presentation. Um, I, I just wanted to see if to say a few last uh, things. Um, one is that governance is also about values and about uh, traditions and about mindsets. Um, and, and that means that the starting point for, for a country which is typical is, is a typical approach, which is not uh, something that um, that could, could be done in other countries at the same time. Or in other words, what works in Finland is maybe not working in Japan and the other way around. So that's the, 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 the national approach is important. And another thing that was a slide, uh, another slide is that we should be aware that in, in many countries, and I think also in Japan, but certainly also in Europe, um, the new public, public management movement has brought us on, the, on the, this track of uh, market type solutions and about effic efficiency as something important. And a lot of, let's say, mental, um, there's a lot of mental software that is put into our heads, like talking about best practice, which is for me completely nonsense because you cannot just copy paste uh, approaches, uh, ideas like less is more, and that you have to break down silos. Um, I don't believe in breaking down silence. I believe in bridging silence. Um, and the next uh, uh, point is um, that no, that I, I have well to skip this. The SDGs as a map for integration and linking uh, all that. I think that's um, that's more or less what I want to say. Meta governance can be done. It's not just a, a theory. It's a practice. It's, it comes from practice. In fact, this was observed. Public managers are doing this, are playing with these styles and are thinking about it, reflecting, and then changing the governance uh, framework. You can do it as a method in, in, in a number of steps. Um, and, and, and that helps it making, uh, making it a, as a kind of a thinking framework for SDG implementation. Some countries are 
consciously uh, introducing meta governance structures, for example, at a higher level, a coordination uh, structure for sustainability for the SDGs. Um, is also uh, happening at the international level. Meta governance is also being used by private enterprises, for example, to get to an agreement on, on, on standards if governments don't do it, for example. So, I, but I want to finish here. The time is up. Um, uh, it was very interesting to, to hear the other speakers and I hope this, that I could contribute a little bit to it. Thank you. And I'm open to any questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Louis, for uh, also sharing with, with all of us a very, uh, um, a very enlightening and, and information. Uh, I mean, you packed a lot of information into very few slides and, and, um, dense, and very quick. Called, and yes, yes it, it's dense is the word. That's right. Um, and, and to be honest, I, f I feel um, we have only heard the beginning and I think um, we should uh, find an opportunity to uh, to yep. listen uh, uh, and allow you to elaborate more on to this discuss. because uh, yeah, yeah to continue the discussion um because so so before uh, so again as uh, as we have said and lewis himself said is uh, if you have any questions you're very welcome to type them into the chat box and and we we will raise them um and before uh, doing so I, I actually have a question and that relates to I just want to hear your opinion. I mean, I know you have said that one size mm -hmm. doesn't fit all, and that's probably quite mm -hmm. true. Uh, one is, uh, solution working in one context doesn't necessarily work in another context. But I just want to hear your, your reflections on if we are, as we are, in a situation where it looks like uh, we are unlikely to achieve the SDGs and uh, by, the, by the deadline date of 2030, mm -hmm and especially the environment related SDGs are the ones that are lacking behind. I believe that is the case in, in Europe as well as in Asia. Yeah. Um, do you, from, a, from the point or from a governance perspective, can you, and maybe from a meta governance perspective, can you make a comment on, on, I mean, is the problem one of governance? And if so, can you say something around what then the problem might be because it looks like we are not moving fast enough or or indeed we're moving in uh i don't know if i should say we're moving in circles or we're move, moving in the wrong direction anyhow i uh, your comment on this would be very much appreciated that uh, question has a lot of angles uh, to <laughs> discuss um, um no i agree that environmental um, implementation is lagging behind in the, in the among the sgs um I also think that I agree with you, what you said in the beginning, that uh, regulation will be an important part. Um, it's not going to work only with regulation, and it's also not going to work in each country in the same way. I was last week training civil servants on the SDGs in Cyprus, small, small country, but all the ministries were there. Um, and um, and th that is a culture which is very centralistic, um, which means that people do not really take individual responsibility. They, they look at a collective, maybe the family, the street or whatever. So awareness raising campaigns don't, as they work in Northwest Europe, they don't work there. You have to, 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 uh, yeah, to, to, make, to have mandatory rules and you have to have strong leaders who show the example. In Northwest European countries, it is, people are more individualistic, so it's their own responsibility and then you can convince them. So th there are still big differences uh, on in, 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 in different countries. Um, what I, yeah, and what I want to say is also is that um, building on what I said on on the, the framing everything as a crisis. What I currently see, and that's that can be that will be a threat, I think, um, for democratic institutions in general and environmental policy also, is that because governments tend to are not so happy with framing every problem as a crisis because it creates unprecedented money power and so on and so on and, and power is addictive um you i see happening in europe in european countries and there are data on that also that countries um are, are now applying um shortcuts legal shortcuts for emergency legislation also for non-urgent issues 
And because it's much faster, you don't need the best knowledge, you don't need stakeholder involvement, um, and, um, and you don't need impact assessment procedures and so on. And, and there's much money for that. So this is a kind of a process of undermining um, democracy, I think, uh, which also undermines the position and which we need of stakeholders or societal stakeholders to, to work um, with governments uh, on implementation of the SDGs. I think this is a, almost a global process uh, what is happening in, in some countries more and in others less. Um, and, and the last thing I wanted to say is that I'm, oh yeah, well, I, I have worked for, for a long time in environmental uh, policy making at the national, subnational, and European level. And what I think is that environmental policymakers should be a bit more proud of what they are doing and a bit more understanding that um, the fact that they are now um, politically generally more of a much higher in the priority uh, list and more powerful potentially that also uh, means a, a change of mindset for policymakers themselves they have to tr trust that they can achieve more than they do and what i sometimes see is that environmental policymakers still um think they are the losers uh, all the time and that is a self-fulfilling prophecy so that is maybe some a call for environmental policymakers: <clears throat> be proud, <clears throat> be proactive, and and grab your chances. The possibilities didn't. The, there are now huge possibilities to 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 you know, to proceed very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. That's that's great. So thank you, Louis. You you um, your explanation um, on. Um, the, the the current trends in governance out there and and how why they cannot be translated is very well taken and ending with almost a, a reminder or a call to to uh, confidence and action as as it is needed on the environmental yes. front is very well taken um because it's it's a like a lewis final uh, uh word in this session uh, i would like to um actually pass the floor back to both the jinhua and so to ask if you have any final takeaways you would like to share with uh, the, uh, the participants with all of us today, then please do so. And I would like to ask uh, Zoe first, if you have any key takeaways, just one or two sentences, then but please do so. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I enjoyed very much uh, this uh, very diverse uh, uh, kind of um, uh, talks uh, by the speakers, uh, particularly on the uh, meta governance. I learned a lot. Um, so I think uh, maybe yeah, an integrated approach and uh, uh, also uh, filling the data gaps uh, uh, and uh, indicator gaps um, are very important for countries to address. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tuto. And last but not least, maybe hear from Jin Hua uh, the, the closing remarks. I thank you, Simon, and uh, not really a closing remark, but uh, anyhow, uh, on behalf of UNEP, I would like to again thank AGS for the outstanding partnership and thank Professor Muleman for the, con for the uh, enlightening contribution and uh, for the great analytics on the data and uh, uh, indicators from Dr. Du and, and uh, what I think uh, the suggestions and the advice from your talking definitely uh, enhancing uh, what UNEP's current uh, strategy to support countries uh, in the region, uh, particularly on capacity development, both for national institutions uh, as Quadras, the key component of governance, as well as all the stakeholders, more and more active now. Uh, uh, on science and the data for implementation and the progress reporting of environmental dimension of the SDGs. Yeah, thank you. 
Amen. Thank you very much uh, to all participants and Jinhua, thank you very much to everybody for joining us uh, uh, today for this uh, very brief hour. I hope you uh, uh, could enjoy it and um, I wish you well and um, au revoir. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks a lot and super time management. Uh... Simon, very good. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye.